Hello there, coffee lovers. My name is Ken Hopkin, store manager of the Chessfield Commons Starbucks in St. Louis, and I would like to talk to you about a chemical called 137-trimethylxanthine, or 137-TMX for short. Now, I bet that most of you care more about this chemical than you might think, because although chemists might refer to it as 137-TMX, the rest of us like to call it caffeine. Caffeine is found in many plants, seeds, and fruits. And although we love the effect, how exactly does caffeine wake us up? Well, as it turns out, our brain produces something called adenosine when we get tired. And that adenosine fuses with receptors in our brain and makes us drowsy and eventually makes us fall asleep. When caffeine is in our system, nerve cells mistake it as adenosine and fuse to the caffeine instead. Keeping adenosine away from our receptors keeps us from getting drowsy. In addition, Adenosine opens up blood vessels, while caffeine restricts them. This is why some headache medicine contains caffeine. To restrict excessive blood flow to the brain, thus making us feel better. Now because of less blood flow and decreased drowsiness, our body thinks there must be an emergency, so it releases hormones to make us feel more alert. On top of that, dopamine levels are increased and puts us in a better mood. Now you can see why we can become so easily addicted and why 90% of Americans rely on caffeine consumption each day. Aside from all the bright and sunshiny parts of caffeine consumption, there could also be a dark side. A lethal dose of caffeine for most humans is about 10 grams. A man from England tried two spoonfuls of the white crystalline powder and died just minutes later. If you want to have some fun, check out caffeineinformer.com slash deathbycaffeine to see just how much of your favorite caffeine beverage, coffee or not, it would take for you to drop dead. For me, it looks like it would take about 142 shots of espresso. I'll put the link to the site in the description below. Now on to a less morbid note. Did you know you might not be ingesting your caffeine at the right times? And that you might get more bang for your buck if you follow your body's natural circadian clock? Your circadian clock is a 24-hour hormonal rhythm that tells your body basically when to do everything. At certain points, cortisol is produced and tells your body when to wake up. This usually happens between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. if you wake up at 6. If you ingest your caffeine at the same time cortisol is produced, the waking effect will greatly be reduced, and since you don't really need it, you'll build a quicker tolerance to the caffeine. Now, assuming you wake up at 6 a.m., you should actually be drinking your coffee between 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. to get the maximum effect, and then at 5.30 p.m. if you want that extra jolt. And if you work at Starbucks and you wake up at 3 a.m. to open, you should be having your first cup between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., and then another one at 3 p.m. if you want that afternoon wake-up call. So caffeine, when consumed the right way, can be an amazing thing. Even pregnant women are safe to have their fair share as long as they stay under the recommended daily limit of 320 milligrams. That may not sound like a lot, but that's actually two cups of coffee or four shots of espresso. So that wraps up our first part on the subject of caffeine. Next episode, we'll be diving into caffeine a little further and its relation to coffee. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting our channel. Keep on drinking coffee and have a great week.